This is the Crowd Grip Pro Glacier from BQ. These Crowd Grip plates have been out for a while now, but mostly just been available for the bamboo lineup of machines. But recently, BQ released this 235 by 235 plate that's compatible on a larger variety of machines. So I went ahead, hopped on Amazon, and picked one up for around 29 bucks. Normally, anything I order off Amazon comes almost immediately. But since this was a new product, I had to wait a few days. And while I was waiting, that initial excitement just started to wear off as everything I was seeing from the community was telling me that this just wasn't a good product. And I ended up doing something that I always tell other people not to do, which was I listened to the echo chamber. And honestly, I should know better because an echo chamber isn't a one-to-one -one analog for sample size. You see, what happens is guy A says the plate's not good. And then guy B says the plate's not good because his friend told him the plate's not good. Well, then you have a community and the third guy sees that two people tell him, well, the plate's not good. I've been told repeatedly that this plate does not hold up to expectations. So instead of just listening to the echo chamber, why don't we let the results speak for themselves? The claim stated by BQ states that the Crowd Grip Pro Glacier have a higher than average adhesion value than your average everyday plate. That's a pretty strong claim. So instead of working our way up, why don't we just go for the throw? To start off with, we're looking at a 10 by 10 millimeter cube that's been extruded by 100 millimeters in both the X and Z axis. This is all printing with zero supports and no brim because again, greater adhesion values is a pretty wild claim. And we have to admit that what we're seeing is pretty impressive. And just to illustrate, there's no glue or anything on the plate itself. It came directly from the packaging right onto the heat plate. And now that the print's over, I wanted to check exactly how good the adhesion worked. Is it just kind of barely holding on or is it actually adhering better to the bed overall? And we can see from this footage that the plate is doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing and showing excellent adhesion. One area where we can almost always guarantee that adhesion would fail is something like an inverted cone. The reason is we have a very small area of adhesion while the nozzle is constantly applying pressure around a growing center of mass. This means that the top of the print is acting as a lever on a very small focused layer of adhesion. Once we increase the level of difficulty, we can tell that the plates still aren't having an issue with adhesion. This only reinforces the fact that the echo chamber isn't always indicative of real world examples. Now it's very obvious that the print had no problem finalizing, but exactly how much adhesion is there on this plate? Even though the print completed, this doesn't really tell us anything. Maybe we just got lucky or maybe adhesion really just was holding on to the edge. Quite often, the best way to find out exactly how strong something is, is to find its breaking point. Overall, this test may be elementary at best, but it's very hard to deny that these results are incredibly impressive. Now, one of the huge benefits to better adhesion isn't exactly having a tight footprint with overhanging centers of mass. Rather, it's quite the opposite. The better case for adhesion is when you have a larger footprint on the build surface itself. The reason for this is the more surface area you have on a build plate, the more susceptible your print is to things like bed warping and lifting from the build surface. You see, during the early stages of your 3D print, there are some things happening to the bed that you can't easily see with a naked eye. Rather than being a perfectly flat surface, your bed is acting more like a wave that is moving up and down. Overall, this has to do with the heating of your bed. And you would think that once the bed reaches its final temperature, that this would stabilize and go away. But we've showed with testing that this bed doesn't actually stabilize until long after the initial heating process has completed. The problem is this is all happening as you're laying down the first layers of your print. This makes adhesion the single most important deciding factor of whether or not you're going to experience lifting or warping around the edges of your print. This print's about 200 by 200 millimeters and about 10 millimeters tall. And one of the worst things about it is I have an area in the center that's cut out and allows cooling to get towards the center of the plate, making it one of the worst case scenarios if we're going to experience lifting around the edges. And if we look closely around the edges, we'll see that we're not experiencing any curling or lifting or any warping of our print. Again, being a strong indicator that we're experiencing a higher level of adhesion. Next up, I wanted to do a print where we do a manual color change. The reason is when you do a manual color change, you generally have a pause at a certain layer 
and the printer will just be paused until you get back to it to change your roll of filament and then continue printing again. This is another area where we tend to see a high level of failure. One of the reasons is people tend to set their layer pauses and then the printer starts printing and then they just walk away and forget about it. And this is exactly what I did. I set my layer pause and I walked away and I just forgot about it. And we can see from the footage, even after several hours, we're not experiencing any issues with bed adhesion. As a quick side note, I have a video coming on manual color changing with a single color 3D printer, but my good friend Mountain Maker beat me to it. So if that's a topic that you're interested in, I'll have that link in the description below. So now that we know that we don't have any real issues when it comes to a smaller surface area or larger surface area when it comes to our prints, why don't we go ahead and do something a little bit different and print some card kits. And this is a two-piece card kit and they don't both fit onto the build plate, which is great because that means we can run two different tests. Our first test shows yet again that we're not experiencing any issues, but I wanted to take it up a notch. You can see just peeling the card kit from the bed that it doesn't want to let it go. But what if we left it on the bed to cool down for 24 or even 48 hours? And we can see that even at 48 hours, we're experiencing the same thing where the adhesion to the bed is more than we should honestly expect. And at this point, I kind of had a thought, what if this is all just magic factory dust and after a few washes or wipe downs, it just goes away and the layer adhesion just disappears. As I said before, I originally purchased the Crowdgrip Pro Glacier plate off of Amazon for around $29. But this is where things get a little bit interesting. You see, BQ sent me an identical plate about halfway through filming, and this gives me an opportunity to see, is this just a fluke, or am I going to experience the same results with the second plate? Now that I have two plates to work with, I took this as an opportunity to completely wipe down and rub down the surface of the original plate with alcohol several times. You see, I wanted to see if this magic adhesion layer rubbed off during cleaning of the plate. And I haven't noticed any difference between being wiped down and its original behavior out of the packaging. Not only that, I could say that we're experiencing the same behavior from the plate I originally purchased to the plate that BQ had sent me. And keep in mind, this meant I had to run every test, not twice, but several times over and over again to make sure that I wasn't running into any sort of bias. Honestly, I'm incredibly happy with the experience that I've had from the Crowd Grip Pro Glacier. And that goes without even mentioning the fact that I'm printing in PLA. And if you read the data sheet with the product, it tells you that POA is the least adhesive of all the filaments when used with this plate. Now, regardless of what the data sheet might say, I did go ahead and make sure that I printed some ABS. And I can safely say that I experienced the same thing with ABS that I experienced with the PLA. The footage you're seeing now is the ABS print. And while I didn't do a massive amount of testing with ABS, I felt like it was ultimately unnecessary as we're kind of already seeing exactly what's going on with the crowd grip. One last thing that I'll mention about the Pro Glacier is the texture on it isn't as severe as you would notice on your standard PEI sheet, but it's not as smooth as you would see on a smooth plate. Rather, it's somewhere in between, almost like a fine sandpaper. So just keep in mind, if texture is something that's important to you, then you might want to check out the finish on the Pro Glacier before you make a decision on if you're interested at all. At this point, I can safely say that I completely disagree with everything I've heard or have been told about the Pro Glacier. Obviously, there's always somebody whose mileage may vary, but for me, I'll be ordering more of these plates for the rest of my printers. Now, if you stick around for a while, there's a very good chance that you're going to see these plates in my upcoming videos.